اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج والنصر اللهم أرنا التلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره والمقاومين بين يديه Let me start with saying congratulations to all of our brothers and sisters on this beautiful and blessing birthday of Al-Hujja alayhi salam. Last week I spoke about the concept of Savior, that it is not only an Islamic concept, but it's shared with all the Abrahamic traditions. In Judaism, they are waiting for Savior with the title of Mosheikh. In Christianity, Messiah, and in Islam, Mahdi, Savior. When we study this concept, we realize that we all share the same goal. The difference is the path, how we get there. We all are waiting for a day that this world is filled with peace, justice, and security. This is something that all traditions, all religions, all nations and cultures are waiting for. The difference is the details of how to get there. We know that in Christian community, in this country there are hundreds and hundreds of books written under Armageddon. Armageddon is an expression in the Bible talking about the final battle between the forces of good and forces of evil. That at the end there will be a huge battle that finally the governor, the government of God will govern the globe. This is a Christian understanding of the Savior that at the end after that Armageddon battle, Jesus is coming and the faithful will survive. In Judaism, they believe that their own uh, Savior, Moshe, is coming, that is not Jesus. They believe that Jesus came and he died and he never comes back. In Islam though, we have indication that there will be battles. By the way, where is the Armageddon area? There are different ideas, but basically an area between what is the occupied Palestine and Israel, Syria and Egypt and Iraq, that area of Middle East is the location of Armageddon or the final battle. Then we see the riwayat and Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam satakun rujfatan bisham تَهْلِكُ فِيهَا مِئَةُ أَلْفِ يَجْعَلَهُ اللَّهُ رَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَعَذَابًا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ There will be a huge battle in Syria. We don't know which battle. Doesn't necessarily mean the current battle, but there will be a battle that hundred thousand. That doesn't mean literally. That means a huge number of people will die, and that is a mercy for the faithful, but that is a punishment 
for the Hippocrates, Yuqtalu ala jisr Baghdad, sab'in alfa. The bridge in Baghdad, 70,000 people will die again. It's talking about huge number. And then we have in the Ruayat, As-Sufyani min binad al-Sham, mutanassiran fi unuqihi salibun. Innaka law ra'ayt as-Sufyani, ra'ayt akhbath al-Nas. As-Sufyani ahmarun, ashqarun, azraq. So, it doesn't look like an Arab in, in the Middle East. So it is like blonde, it is uh, red and blue. So it looks like more like an a European and Western guy. Is Sofiani doesn't have to be leather leaf and generation of Abu Sofyan, but with the mentality of Abu Sofyan and hypocrisy of Abu Sofyan, but it might be different ethnicities and different color. So these are many ahadith that telling us that it's going to be really a chaos at the end and before the appearance of, of the Savior and so many battles going on and so many confusion. And Imam Sadiq said, Sawtun min as min Jibreel wa sawtun min al-ard fattabu as sawt al-awwal وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْأَخِيرِ أَنْ تُفْتَنُوا بِهِ At the end there will be a, a call from the heaven, from Jibreel, and a call from the earth, from Shaitan. And he said, make sure that you follow the heavenly call and not the earthy call. ثُمَّ يُنَادِي إِبْلِيسِ فِي آخِرِ النَّهَارِ at Sot al Awal Yunadi Munadin Awal al Nahar Ala in al Hatta fi Ali in Washiate, Thumma Yunadi Iblis fi Akhir in Nahar Ala in al Hatta fi Sufiani Washiatu, Fayartabu in the Dalika al Muktelun. So there is so much confusion, there uh, a heavenly call and an earthy call. One call is that uh, the, the path of Ali. Uh, and Ahlul Bayt, that is a path of truth, and the other one is saying the path of Sufyani. So there are so many different call and so many uh, chaos and confusion and, and battle at the end before the appearance of, of the Savior. Now somebody asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, that why we have to go through all of this? I mean, why? It's a long period of uh, occultation and, and ghayba. Uh, why Allah doesn't make it easier for us? Just right away, go to the point and, you know, uh, get over with this chaos. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he recited Qulu uh, Ta'ala, لِيُمَحِّسَ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ That is a test that al ghayba uh, a long occultation, is a time of test that Allah would purify the faithful and deprive the hypocrites and disbelievers from his blessing. So when we go through the, the concept of al-Mahdi in uh, the tradition and hadith, there are 6,000 hadiths. I mean, it's not something to doubt about that. And so it is just one hadith, and that hadith is not sahih or it's da'if or something, or it's hadith mursal. No. When you have 6,000 hadith, is even more a hadith about al-Mahdi and al ghiba than a hadith on, on al-Ghadir and Imam Ali. And these are both from a Shia or Sunnah, all the sources, they are talking about uh, this issue. And, and it's interesting that the Prophet talked about Al-Mahdi before the birth of the Mahdi. And the A'imma, also the same thing. Imam Mahdi was not even born at that time and they were talking about that. Or even Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, all these uh, Sunni sources that they mention Ahadith Al-Mahdi, those books were written before the birth of Al Imam Al Mahdi. Or even Mathalana Adriya, Dua Al Ahad, or Dua Al Nudba, you know, one of the 
أدعية مستحبة that we recite uh, every morning, uh, every Friday morning is Dua Nudba. Beautiful Dua. That Dua was uh, said by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And that was before the birth of Al-Mahdi. Ayna Baghiyatullah. Ayna Qasimu Shawkat Al-Mu'tadeen. Ayna Mu'izzu Al-Awliya wa Mudhillu Al-A'da. Ayna Sababu Al-Muttasil Bayna Al-Ard wa Al-Sama. Ayna Sahibu Yawm Al-Fadh wa Nashir Raayat Al-Huda. Ayna Babu Allah Al-Ladhi Minhu Yuta. Beautiful, long Dua Al-Nudba. All are looking and searching for Savior to come and to save this world from this confusion and chaos and corruption. There are so many ayat also that don't mention the name of the Mahdi. By the way, Mahdi is not the name. Mahdi is Lala, right? Mahdi has a, a title. The name of Al-Imam uh, Al Al-Mahdi, his name is Muhammad ibn al-Hasan al-Askari. But Al-Mahdi is a letter, is a title, it's not like a personal name. But we call him Al-Mahdi, he is a source of guidance. Al-Allama Al-Maylisi Qudus Sirru, he uh, collected 70 verses from the Quran, that these verses are ta'wil of Al-Dhuhur Al-Mahdi. They are not tafsir, but they are ta'wil, that means indicating that uh, there should be a time that uh, this must happen. And there are many hadith, uh, many ayat of Ahlul Bayt in the Quran, for example, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اَهْتَدَى So it's the Allah is saying that I am Ghaffar, I am forgiving. For whom? لِمَنْ تَابَ Number one, for those who repent, وَآمَنَ Number two, they have faith. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And they did good deeds. So what else we need? I mean, if we تُبْنَا وَآمَنَّا وَعَمِلْنَا عَمَلْ صَالِحًا So what else we need? Why at the end ثُمَّ اَهْتَدَى So somebody asked the Imam that يَا بْنَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ What is the meaning of ثُمَّ اَهْتَدَى? Is it not enough that somebody تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Is not enough to receive مَغْفِرَةُ اللَّهِ And Imam said ثُمَّ اَهْتَدَى اِهْتَدَى بِوِلَايَتِنَا Someone who received the hidayat of Ahlul Bayt Because someone may have آمَنَ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Right? But different direction and the, at the end there is no guarantee that this person will get to this de destination if he doesn't have that hidayah doesn't have that direction so these are about Ahlul Bayt إِنِّي تَارِكُمْ فِيكُمْ الثَّقْلَانِ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَعِطْرَتِي both of them Al-Mahdi Al-Quran we need to focus on the both legacy of the Holy Prophet many of us as you know followers of Ahlul Bayt unfortunately don't pay enough attention to the Quran well, the Prophet said, "Another in the Quran, ibadah. Even you open the Quran and look at the Quran. Even if you don't read it, just look at the verses, ibadah. That's act of worship. As you are looking at Amir al-Mu'minin and Aisha, قالت رأيت أبو بك يكثر النظر إلى وجه علي بن أبي طالب." This is something that the Sunni scholars, they mentioned that Aisha is saying that I look at my dad, Abu Baghdad, he keeps looking at the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen. فَقُلْتُ يَا أَبَا إِنَّكَ لَتَكْثُرُ النَّذَرِ إِلَىٰ عَلِي إِبْنَ أَبِي طَالِبِ What happened that you keep looking at the, the face of Ali? فَقَالَ لِي لَأَنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله يقول النذر في وجه علي عبادة
The same Prophet who said, "Another of the Quran, ibada, another ila wajh Ali in ibada, because that is kitab Allah wa sunnati." And Al Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam is the son of the same Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the son of Al Hussein ibn Ali. And this is we see this connection. It's Ayn Talib bi dam al Maqtul bi Karbala. You are talking about Imam Al Mahdi. Who is going to look at what happened, the tragedy of Karbala, and put things in order? There's a connection. Even in Ashura, when we see each other, Adam Allah Ujurana bi Musabi Abi Abdullah al Hussein, wa jalla wa iyaq min al Talibin bi Tharhi ma al Imam al Mahdi. We say that we make connection between the Savior and what happened in Karbala. Because this is the continuity of Karbala. Karbala wants to establish al-adal, al-izz, al-haq, al-hurriya, al-haya, al-adab, al-akhlaq. These are the values of Imam Hussein. These are the same values of Imam al-Mahdi coming for rationality, for truth, for justice, for freedom, for modesty. For courtesy, for husn al-akhlaq, good character. This is why we are told and encouraged to reflect on our duties and obligations during the al-ghibah. What is, what is our obligation? Well, we pray for Imam al-Mahdi to come soon. But dua by itself is not enough. We have other takalif and other obligations during this time. Number one, al-ma'rifa. To have good understanding of al-imam. This is why in dua, Allahumma arrifni nafsaka, fa innaka allam tu arrifni nafsaka, lam a'rif rasulak. Allahumma arrifni rasulaka, fa illam tu arrifni rasulaka, lam a'rif hujjatak. Allahumma arrifni hujjataka, fa innaka illam tu arrifni hujjataka, lalal tu andini. Oh Allah, if you don't help me to know your hujjah, my leader, al-Mahdi, then I'm lost. I get lost. My, my faith is lost. We need your help and blessing to receive this marifa, to receive this understanding. So that is our first duty, understanding, knowledge, education about our faith and about our leader. And number two, al-mahabba, love. أَدِّبُوا أُولَادَكُمْ عَلَى ثَلَاثِ خِصَالٍ حُبِّ نَبِيِّكُمْ وَحُبِّ أَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ وَقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ This is a hadith from the Holy Prophet that train your kids to be loving to your Prophet, to your Ahlu al-Bayt, and recitation of the Holy Quran. فَإِنَّ حَمَلَةَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي ذِلِّ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَوْمَ لَا ذِلِّ إِلَّا ذِلُّهُ مَعَ أَنْبِيَائِهِ وَأَسْفِيَائِهِ On the day of judgment that everyone is confused, those who were carrying the Quran and reading the Quran and applying the Quran, they are under his protection on that day. نَوْرُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ بِنُورِ الْقُرْآنِ Nabi alayhi salam is saying that bring light and beauty to your buyut, to your houses with qiraat al-Qur'an. And Amir al-Mu'mineen said, شِيْعَتُنَا كَثِيرَةُ تِلَاوَتِهِمْ لِلْقُرْآنِ One of the signs of Shia is that they read the Qur'an in love. Because Quran, ayyuhal akhwa al-akhawat, brothers and sisters, Quran is the foundation of our faith. Quran is the foundation of our life. Quran is the foundation of Islamic civilization and Islamic salvation. And especially now that we are approaching the holy month of Ramadan, Rabi'ul Quran, we have to pay attention. Our kids paying attention. من قرأ القرآن وهو شاب اختلت القرآن بدمه ولحمه. Especially for the youth when they read read the Quran, the Quran becomes part of their system, part of their 
breathing, part of their blood, part of their character it is very important. So, number one, al-ma'rifah, number two, al-mahabbah, and number three, al-amal, action. So it doesn't make sense for some people to say, نحن منتظرون, we are expecting the appearance of the Savior, but then be lazy and be irresponsible. Because Al-Imam Al-Mahdi is about Mahdi, is about Hidayah, guidance and grace and direction. Al-Imam Al-Mahdi is manifestation of miraculous mercy of the Lord of this world. We are expecting for such a miraculous guidance and mercy who is heralding the leadership of al-salihun, al-muttaqun, al-mustaz'afun. He is coming to be a good news for the peacemaker, for the pious people, for those who are oppressed. If that is really the meaning of expectation, then there is no place among the muntadirin for those who are lazy, for those who are useless, for those who are irresponsible, for those who are hypocrite, for those who are corrupt. There is no place. Because the philosophy of expectation is a philosophy of meaning and motivation and mobilization and determination and courage and commitment and iman and energy. So these are the meanings of al-intidhar. And it's very important to get this application of this aspect of al-intidhar in a world that is full of darkness, full of corruption from the White House. Look at what is going on there. White House like is a uh, like a Mickey Mouse these days and all this hiring and firing and contradictory uh, statements and attacks and expressions from that White House to the White uh, the, to the House of all the Saudis even much worse than that all this game and all this Islamophobia and Mahdi-phobia and Shia-phobia and Iran-phobia and all this phobia by all these false figures in the media, in the mighty world, in the money world, in the market, is just amazing. And this tells us that as Muntadirin, we must be armed with al-ma'rifa, al-mahabba, al-amal, education, understanding, love, passion, and action. These are the duties of those who are waiting for al-Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. It's a big, big duty, brothers and sisters. And today is like the birth of this al-muntadar, al-mawood, this powerful, peaceful, promise leader who is introduced in the Quran and Hadith. Do we really wait for such a savior? I mean, our city, our community, our country, on the world, don't show that we are really ready for such a savior. He is the qalb alam al imkan. He is the, the heart of humanity and the heart of the world. And today is his birth. Where is that light and where is that excitement and passion and crowd and preparation that should fool the entire space and community and everywhere? So it's not to blame Imam al Mahdi. Where is he? Why he is late? Of uh, blaming ourselves. Where are we and how much are we ready with the arm of al Marfa, al Mahabba, al Amal? This is not a business as usual. This Islamophobia, brothers and sisters, is so serious. You know this story of Hamtramik. 
you remember a couple of years ago, there was a big issue that they want to air like Adan from, uh, from a masjid in Hamtramic. And all the media were like rising just for one Adan. That from the manner they want to, like that was the biggest problem in the world, the media. Now, just last week, there was another thing. It was not about prayer. It was not about the mosque. It was about some Muslim girls in Hamtramck that they organized a, a prom for, for the high school Muslim girls. And they said, OK, let us, we want to be separate. We want to be free, just Muslim girls. We want to have a place and get together and have a prom. And that's fine. If women, they are together and they want to dance and there is no man and they are just among themselves. So they said, this is not a problem. It's not haram and we want to do that. I mean, they made the media from New York Times, started writing articles about this from New York Times. To all the media have been talking about from in Hamtramck, they said, oh, now the Sharia law came to Michigan because now this girl want to have a problem, they want to just have privacy dancing together. So if we pray, you cannot tolerate it. So, oh, they want to pray and the Adan is going out. Now they are not praying, they want to even dance, but they want to have like a small place. Even that is Sharia law and that is danger. I mean, this Islamophobia is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. But it's reality. It's reality that shows that how hard it is to be responsible, to be faithful, to be a practicing Muslim. And for this reason, maybe we hear in the Rawayat, Amalu Afdal Amal Ummati Intidar al Faraj. And the Prophet said that Allahumma Lakani Ikhwani Maratain wa Allah. Bless me to meet my brothers. Some people around him said, Ya Rasulullah, am I nahnu ikhwanak? We are your brothers. And the Prophet said, no. Innakum ashab, you are my companions. Wa ikhwani qawmun fi akhir al-zamana amanu wa lam yarawni. La ahaduhum ashaddu baqiyyatan ala dinihi min khart al-qitaad. Fi al-laylat al-dhalma. Ulaika masabihu al-duja. It's very hard that you stay faithful in Akhir Zaman. It is like a, a night, a total deep darkness. And you want to survive. And you are holding a, a, a thrown trees that is all this troublemaker around you. And you want to save and survive. It is how difficult that you don't have anything else to, to hold and to, to survive. This is how hard it is in that night of darkness in Akhir al-Daman. The time that people may talk about Allah and religion. But kalima to haqqan yuradu bahal batil. They say the right thing, but their action is different. They say, Allahu Akbar. God is great. That's a beautiful word. But what they really mean, they are not talking about Allah. They are talking about their egos. They are talking about evil. Kalima to haqqin yuradu bahal batil. They talk about democracy. It's a beautiful word. But what they mean is dictatorship. They talk about freedom. But in reality, they are looking for a slavery. It's not freedom. They talk about Islamic State and the Khilafah, the Khalifat. But that is not an Islamic caliphate. That is corruption and crime and bloodshed. They talk about Jewish state. It's a beautiful to have a Jewish state, Judaism. But what they mean by that is occupation and oppression and injustice. So always, kalima to haqqin yuradu bahal batil. This is khadim haramayn sharifayn. It's a beautiful word, khadim haramayn sharifayn. But in reality, they are khadim and haramiyin, not haram. They are khadim, they are the guardians of, of the corruption, not haramayn sharifayn. They are murtazagin, the mercenaries. 
Now they are getting mercenaries from Pakistan, from Egypt, from Afghanistan to go and to kill the people in Yemen. Can you imagine? All these palaces, all this power, all this pleasure, all these princes, they have one goal. A poor Yemen is that already millions of them in danger of death because of hunger, lack of food, lack of pharmacy and medicine. 